this meme coin phenomena is fascinating because it's a form of one-on-one betting. Um, there's truly no value. So when Chamath was doing SPACs and they were lying about financials or, or projecting financials, you know, that was them telling us that there were fundamentals to come. And the meme coins make no such promises, right? The meme coins make none. It's like taking yourself public or taking an idea public from day one, from a, your, your own idea to being a publicly traded uh, a coin through an exchange is a fascinating development. This episode of Trends with Friends is brought to you by Freck. I believe in this product so much that I moved most of my passive stock market investing assets over. If you are like most of us that invest in ETFs, you should know that there is a better way that lets you invest in an index like the S&P 500 while saving thousands on your taxes. It's called Freck Direct Indexing and takes zero additional effort. Just as easy as investing in an ETF, Freck Direct Indexing can help you earn more by unlocking tax savings through tax loss harvesting. Direct indexing has been around for decades, but only through wealth advisors at high fees and high minimums. Technological innovation has changed that and made it available directly to investors like yourself. Direct indexing is now growing faster than mutual funds and ETFs. Join the thousands switching to get more bang for your buck. Visit freck.com. That's F-R-E-C.com to get started. Yo! Honus Wagner, welcome everybody to uh, Trends with Friends. I'm Howard Linson. Haven't showered. Uh, I'm joined by In a month. someone who has showered. Always clean. Uh, JC. I love that sweatshirt, uh, Howard. Like, Where can I get one? Yeah, this is a rare. This is a rare rally road. I'm an owner of a Honus Wagner card, fractional owner. So am I. And. Uh, Oh, and the rally yeah. thing, yeah, and I bought the sweat. You had to buy this. You had to buy this. this was, Dude, that's uh, a, I never compliment because yeah. you dress horribly. But in this case, this Horrible. is a great sweatshirt. I love that, Howard. Yeah, but look at this. I'm just saying. I'm, I, I, I think that's sick. I'd rock that. I thought you would. I wore this knowing that you would comment. So I It's great. That. I need and one of those. Phil, who literally is in a fight with his razor. Might be his his wife might be mad at him. Uh, it looks like he just uh, is training for a fight with Mike Tyson. What the hell's going I on? I don't. I don't shave like that. I shave a couple four times days. a week, maybe. Mike Tyson. I mean, this guy. He's an animal. Whew. Like he's a beast. Like you're gonna I fight get, him. First no of matter all, how old you are, you're gonna go fight him. You're gonna you fight doing? a guy who had a face tattoo removed. You know how painful that must be. He's going to make like, a lot of money, though. Like, how much all, money would you take? Like, how much money do you think this guy's going to make on this fight? A ton. A ton. More than probably. Again, knocked out by Mike fights. Tyson, so, whatever. He'll recover, I guess. You know, it's a lot of money. I, I, I was just reading Tyler Denks, who's founder of Beehive, email, which is great. I just wrote about it today. Big desk. Uh, he's a great writer, it turns out, too. Uh, Phil and Rita, and he had a picture of that Mike, uh, that post Mike Tyson Evander Holyfield when he had just bit the ear. And Tyson's in the ring and all the cops. It was like the fight after the fight. That was the title of this photo. And you see all these cops around Tyson. What a, f- I mean, dude, I remember the Mike Tyson era. It was, he was scary dude in the ring. Like you were scared for the other guy. Yeah. He was the greatest of all time yeah. in the moment. Yeah. And he couldn't sustain I it think. once uh, Customato died. You couldn't, you couldn't survive. You couldn't find room in the ring to survive. You know, but I do remember being, Watching the Buster Douglas fight, and it would freak me out. That was one of the end. That was like when dreams crash, right? Like you just like there was no way Buster Douglas could beat Mike Tyson, and that's when yeah, you realize that it's not just about that everybody's fucked up. That's when you realize everybody's fucked the head up. game is so important to anything, uh, whether it's markets or sports. And you saw it. Ooh, you saw a, it with him. What a segue! I mean, he, he couldn't hold it together. His what? his 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 trainer slash kind of dad. You know, Godfather uh, died, and you know it crushed you. He already had a terrible, terrible childhood. Okay, let's get to it. Let's get into this. That was maybe one of the best non-segue. It's a bad segue, and I don't really care. I'm not, you know, 
But let's talk about this. Let's talk about the Google Apple thing. And uh, Google Gemini may partner with Apple after anti-woke crowd mocks the early efforts of Gemini, which I think is kind of a funny twist because, and they deserve the mocking to some degree because they were overly politically correct. Yeah, they went, I mean, who couldn't have seen this coming? I, I, I never knew what woke was. So let me just give a quick background on what JC, we can walk through the, the actual chart because um, I wasn't buying this one dip because like any time, any time when something becomes a meme, I get like, I somehow get sucked into the, you know, uh, the, my own behavioral biases, but the, really the woke thing started during the ZERP thing, right? Like it wasn't so much that they were woke. It was Google was giving them food, laundry, whatever. They were fucking every whim. It was like the Russian empire, right? Like who could have seen this coming? It wasn't so much about them being woke. It was like, yeah, woke was inevitable when you're giving them every comfort known to man to be an employee there. They didn't have to think. Uh, they just had to just wake up and and be at Google. So obviously, uh, you, you know the the you know 2022, you start calling it woke, but this was not like something that happened overnight. Uh, this was just a decade of um, pampering, uh, much like what happened to Tyson. You know, like you get pampered and it changes your behavior. And um, what's interesting is the technology is good. Right. So in the end, like the mistakes are the mistakes. But like if you run Gemini on your Gmail or if you're running true AI on like your own data, it works. Like, do I need, you know, is it going to is it going to be the best at everything? No. But, you know, I'm kind of skeptical about AI in general. So like who I'm not surprised that people are making fun of their AI. The very definition of AI is is that it improves itself. Right. It gets smarter as time goes by. So if the first efforts and the first reveal are, you know, laughable, which they were, and overly politically correct, they're going to get better from there. And so even if uh, Google has some bureaucratic limitations, you have to figure they're going to they're gonna get it over time. JC, you have any thoughts about this? I, I really don't know what the hell you guys are talking about, uh, to be honest. <laughs> That's the perfect answer. And, and by the way, two plus two, I think we're along JC's line, two plus two equals four. Pretty hard to improve on that uh, with AI. And uh, in fact, it's going backwards because maybe two plus two doesn't equal four. That's the only way that AI could like challenge two plus two Dude, equals I bought four. The thing. I'm hearing I the bought kid the, the, the thing, the rabbit. So I'm going to play with the AI toy. Maybe I learned something. And maybe not, and I lost $199, whatever. <laughs> that's a smart move you know i love i love the rabbit idea there's there's a few of these but I, I love you have to play with it right the only thing we all haven't played with and let's be honest is the apple vision pro so it's probably the first toy that's come along of, since google glass um and i'm sure it's better than google glass in many ways but, but because of price and because of like the single use case pretty much uh, it's pretty much a flaw, right? Right, right Perlman. Um, I mean, it's just we're just not getting enough screen time, so we gotta attach it to our face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> but speaking of face, look at this. Phil, I lost a tooth. Speaking of Mike Tyson, what? What? Ellen uh, smacking you around again? Is that what happened? No, I'm hitting age where shit just falls off. Hair grows, but body parts fall off. He's trying to I kiss the dog. Fucking terrible. I get that. My dentist is trying to get me to wear those uh, Invisalign. She's like, your face is fucked up. And she shows me like a mold of my face or whatever. And she's like, your teeth are, I, I, I don't know. She's just selling me. She's a, she, uh, you know, they're all, uh, they're all uh, 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 sadists, right? All the dentists are sadists. So Perlman, <laughs> anytime, know. anytime you, you think you need Invisalign, just go for a walk. Just take a walk. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell her the next time I go for. I'm going in for cleaning this week, and I'm just going to be like, you know, oh, instead of getting Chase is on fire. Chase is literally on it. fire. I love it. Okay, so I wanted to cover. Up for I did want to cover a couple other AI things because there's major things happening. And listen, every week to week, there's going to be fluctuations in sentiment related to new technologies. We've seen this happen eight million times before. If you've been around even for a minute, but. If you keep your eye on the prize, what's happening right now is just insane. 
And there is a new technology happening and uh, NVIDIA chips are real. And there's a couple other things that I just wanted to point out. The Google thing, you're right, JC. The Google thing is, the Google Apple thing is really, not only that, they're not even going to say anything to, about it officially until June anyway. So it doesn't, you know, whatever some media source is whispering doesn't even matter anyway. And in addition to that, the, 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 the magnitude of the consumer market for AI is sm much small, orders of magnitude smaller than the enterprise or the national implications. And when I say national, there was a story that came out, nobody's talking about this, but we could talk about it briefly, that uh, China is using AI in, in the largest high-speed railway system in the world. And they are squeezing efficiency out of that market. They're plugging everything into it, and you know, including the wind and the weather. And they're able to tell what weak links might occur in the system way ahead of anything breaking and they're fixing things before they break. Yeah. But like, listen, you know, as somebody I'm, I'm dumb when it comes to this stuff, but there's a few things that I've learned over the years and, and this stuff has already been in place. And I, I like, I know about it. Cause like, I like sports and stuff like that. Like the NFL, when they create their schedule, like it was such a shit show when they first started doing it. And once they started using like machine learning and using the machines to help them create the schedule so that it makes sense, they had a lot of success in doing that. Like there's always been an element of using the technology. I, I, I guess that we could just argue it's getting better, it's getting faster, right? It's not getting worse or slower. Like how good is it? How much potential is there? I mean, I, I guess we'll see, right? But just things keep getting better and things keep getting better at different rates, I guess. Things are getting better much faster They're in pretty that regard. Cool. Um, I mean, there's a difference cool. between 32 football teams and 40,000 kilometers of uh, high-speed railway. Yeah, but the same idea, right? You're just. <laughs> it's the same idea. I agree. And speaking of that, the NCAA guy, you know, the head of the NCAA is on the uh, bracket show talking about how he was up all night. They were up all night picking the teams for the brackets. Dude, they got a, they got a computer simulation model. They got it all figured out before the, you know, before Sunday even happened. And the guy's talking about it being up. But you think there's, there's got to be a human element which says. They're up all night because they know who's going to fucking try and kill me for not picking the 6015. That's pretty much the reason. Well, the problem is when a lot, of, when a lot get... of like um, teams that win their conferences uh, that, that we're not supposed to win their conferences, when that happens, then a lot of bubble teams get left out because there's other random teams that wouldn't have been there otherwise. But because they won their conference, they get put in. No computer can over. Yeah, no computer can overcome the emotion of a bubble team being left out. That's why that pricks up all night, and he deserves it. That's why he's getting paid to do a shitty job. Uh, One last next. AI point. So the uh, the Nvidia guy, uh, people are saying he's 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 Wang, Wang. King Wang. Wang. People are saying he's more popular than uh, Taylor Swift, and he was just speaking in Germany, and he he unveiled this. You know, I don't even understand it to be honest with you. All I know is that your boy Ram is saying that they are exceeding Moore's law right now. And there's this chart, a thousand times AI compute in eight years. Here's the money quote. We're accelerating things by a thousand times in the domains we focus on. Uh, when we accelerate something a thousand times in 10 years, if your demand goes up a hundred times, your cost goes down by 10 times. I, I, I don't understand. I, I, I don't know. I mean, J uh, 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 Howard, maybe we need to get Ron back on to explain this to us, but it just yeah, sounds we'll, we'll get him back on because he was here. Here's what we need to know is that this is happening. Rom's been right. We like to have people on the show that are right. They may not be famous. Uh, that's why you're on Bill. The, uh, and that's why, uh, um, JC's, JC's right JC's and famous. Cause you get, yeah, JC's a little more famous and, and he's not, a, he's not, a, he's not, a, he's not, a, he's not afraid of, of fame. I like you and I. JC was telling um, me the other day that he's the, getting recognized out in Podunk, Pennsylvania now. Like he lives out in the country now. He should, I like, he should. I, like, I just tell him, Pro, when I, I like making my money quietly. Like I don't, I don't need everybody, you know. Like imagine like you're a rock star. It is star. weird to be like, recognized. You're a rock star and everybody, like if you're Justin Bieber or whatever, like everybody knows you, like that's, that's gotta be tough. I'd rather kind of be, I like a low profile. Yeah, you wanna be internet. Internet famous is better. So, yeah. so 
uh, Phil, I was going to say about NVIDIA and about what's going on here with Taylor, you know, the Taylor. He is an incredible thinker. He's obviously put in his time, his 10,000 hours. He has success. He has all the, and he says a lot of very interesting, not provocative, but just interesting things, right? Like about struggle and suffering. Um, Cause he himself like started at the bottom in many ways. So I think it's a great story and it's also a great product and with great, you know, success comes great responsibility, but I'm going to stick with Parekh. And with ROM, there are go to on AI. It's this is real. It's infiltrating everything. I don't really, I don't have a strong opinion because it's coming no matter what we do. Unlike Bitcoin, which is coming, but not at the same pace that AI is now coming. Because, you know, Bitcoin doesn't need to be adopted. You don't need to be involved in crypto. You that's a that's an opt in versus AI. Yes, JC can buy the rabbit, but even if he isn't buying the rabbit, the I, Apple and Google are going to deploy AI. They've been doing it in G, in Gmail and tracking you forever. So the the pace of AI is coming faster than the pace of crypto. And we'll talk about meme coins and crypto later. But Nvidia is just you know it's not an overnight success, much like Taylor Swift, and 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 he's got longevity, much like Taylor Swift. I think that. And Taylor Swift, if if you're talking to Swifties, I heard um, uh, Conan talking to uh, I forget in a senior moment, but they were talking about his daughter, the daughters loving knowing every lyric to Taylor Swift songs. And we're not quite there with Nvidia, but Nvidia's processes are, are in everybody's machine, so it's kind of very similar, right? That the success uh, you compare the two, but they're very different, very different. You're a Swifty, right, Howard? You, 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 you like a tear, a tail Swift. I'm not. I'm not. My daughter never. My daughter has terrible taste in music. Uh, my son has the opposite. He's a freaking connoisseur of of a culture. My daughter is um, caught up in that pop, pop, you know, top twenty type uh, culture, which is horrifying um, because it's 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 the opposite of what you. It just every song she puts on makes me cringe. Versus Max surprises me because he'll go from country to classic to folk and pick, you know, great tunes and explain to me why he likes country in the same breath right after telling me why he likes rock. That's fascinating to me because uh, I didn't know he thought like that. I don't know where JC, we got to that. JC, the play is that to get to Rachel and the next time she's home to pilfer the Honus Wagner sweatshirt and have it delivered. You borrow it. I, I, you can, you can wear this. My, my, what's my, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pilfer. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to get Rachel. I, once in you on wear, once Lindsay wore it, I'm not touching that. <laughs> not touching it. <laughs> She'll be like, shower. what do you want it for? <laughs> okay. Let's get on the charts. There's like a let's layer. Get what is that smell? <laughs> Why does it smell like bagels and why is there a lot it smells of like, like falafel? Like a, like a layer Why does it of smell like falafels like, in our bedroom all the time. <laughs> but there's a, there's a piece of Howard's tooth in here. Mm. It's kind of like a home. That's funny that your teeth are very right. correct. Okay, so Too Bitcoin. Good. So all Bitcoin right, ra- runs to seventy thousand, and now all of a sudden it's pulling back. JC, why don't you give us the? Uh, why don't you give us a, a quick uh, technical take here? What's going on here? Everybody's looking. I at I mean, it, listen. So. You know, the 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 trade was. Flip the book, mortgage the house, you know, go go ham on a breakout above 31,000. Like we talked about it over and over and over again. Funny haha, but like, like seriously though, like flip the book against 31, you know, we're going back to the all time highs. Now here we are. Now the idea was, you know, in my head, obviously I didn't know what was going to happen. In my head, we were going to get to 47, take a break, get to 70, take a break, and then ultimately break out to 100. Well, we got to we got to 47, we took a break, we broke out, got to 70, we're taking a break. Like this is perfectly normal. These are kind of steps along the way. This is form of resistance. I think if it's got a 70 handle, if you're above 70 and you're sticking that landing, I think you own it for a trade to 100 and then some, but 100's next, not because it's a pretty round number. There are actual measured moves and reasons why it's, it's technically 102, but basically about 100,000 is, is the target. I think ultimately you can go higher than that, but that's sort of the next step. But step one, now we got to clear these levels. I don't know how long it's going to take. Could take a long time. 
um, could take weeks, could take months, uh, could take years. I don't, I don't think it's going to take years. Uh, I don't think it's going to take weeks either. Um, you know, we'll see. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see because when you look at the supply and demand equation, uh, you're, you're getting a lot more demand opportunities coming in this go around versus the other two tests several years ago of these levels. So supply is clearly overwhelming demand as we're seeing. So that, that's still the case that, that has demand as much as demand has come in, it has yet to absorb that overhead supply. So we'll see how long it takes. Um, it's anybody's guess. Yeah. When, when JC had the mortgage house and then it fake breakout and then it did, it got it the second time above 31 and we didn't really follow up. That was JC's trade. And I didn't think it would go to 70. I mean, JC had the call. He was mortgaging the house. A great call. And we, we weren't throwing numbers around. I think JC uh, has his measured moves and there's math involved. I mean, involved the, 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 the target was the former highs. I, I, I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't okay, that so here, so here we are. We got, there. we got there very fast. We got there uh, against the headlines. And then we got there with not just Bitcoin. We got there with, you know, if you had, if you had told me I'd like to zoom out if we can later. Ethereum doesn't interest me, but Solana does. Why does, does. Ethereum if, interest if we you? We have a chart of Solana. Because you don't own I don't a crypto punk? Because uh, I, I don't own a lot, but I think I own a lot of Solana through my funds, um, through the funds that I'm investor in. But the calls that I was making over the last month, you know, because I'm seeing, you know, we're investors in some, well, a lot of crypto funds. I was part of our emerging manager thesis was to allocate there during the bottom, like during the crash. Um, and so, because I don't own a lot of crypto in my own wallets, uh, I own it through. I pay the two and twenty for the alpha. I, I pay other people to get that alpha for me. Not I just don't have the confidence. I think what surprised me the most about that move to seventy thousand was the the shitcoin move. Right, not so much Solana, but all like the new things that came along with Bitcoin at all time highs or reaching all time highs. JC was this. Um, this meme coin phenomena. And so we've got to another level, right? Like the, the 70,000, this move to all time highs in Bitcoin and, and Solana and um, Ethereum's working its way, was working its way back up there until this pullback. Um, the, the amazing thing was what it unlocked, which was this cultural, you know, if you had told me that Dogecoin had, would have a $24 billion valuation um, in 2021 uh, when it was crashing and it all made sense to us that it was crashing, right? Like, I wouldn't have believed you. So there are some things happening that are silly again. I don't think Bitcoin's silly. It's, it's, it's truly got some basis in code and supply demand. Uh, but there's a lot of silliness that's coming along with that. And and the biggest silliness, I'll give you, if we can pull up a Solana chart, is probably Solana, which we talked about on Trends with Friends when it was breaking out above 20, JC, I had mentioned it um, on Trends with Friends in the summer. And here we are, and we talk, I talked about buying it in the 20s, and here we are at 200. Now, it's not easy to have a 10-bagger. Okay? No when I said to, 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 to get the, to own some above 20, there's no way that I thought it would go to 200, but it did. And with Solana coming to 200 comes the craziness of now we starting to see why it came to 200. And, and Solana has become a layer for speedier, funner, weirder cultural transactions, which are these meme coins. And with that comes uh, exchanges that now specialize in meme coins, Telegram bots that allow you to launch your own meme coin. And a meme coin is pretty funny because it's the trolls trolling the trolls, right? Like Elon Musk brought us Dogecoin promotion, but now there's the he, Doji's being trolled by a thousand coins a day being built on, um, on Solana. So I think the next phase that the 70,000 unlocked is what comes after Bitcoin. And is it is it Solana? Is it Ethereum? Is it both? Is it Avalanche? Is it a few others? Again, a little foreign to me. We'll have some guests on that explain it. But this meme coin phenomena is fascinating because it's a form of one-on-one -on -one betting. Um, there's truly no value. So when Chamath was doing SPACs and they were lying about financials or or projecting financials, you know, 
that was them telling us that there were fundamentals to come. And the meme coins make no such promises, right? The meme coins make none. It's like taking yourself public or taking an idea public from day one, from a, your, your own idea to being a publicly traded uh, a coin through an exchange is a fascinating development. Um, and what's super fascinating about it, JC, and you should play, we should have like a, 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 a technical analysis coin. Um, again, like this is, you talked about this in the last cycle, but like now you could really have a Fibonacci coin, right? For Fibonacci enthusiasts. It's pretty good No idea. value, but if you like the term Fibonacci, we could create a coin and track it here and maybe offer some value. But like, then the world takes over this thing and can drive it to whatever price it wants. And even if, and the point is there literally was no promise of value versus the SPAC and the, and the regular financial world would literally promises value and never delivers or, or rarely delivers. So I think this is the most interesting part of this. Yeah. Uh, but you want to know something from an investing standpoint, from an actual mm -hmm. like, okay, like that's cool, funny, haha, but like, okay, how do we make money from it? We now have the tools and the technology and the alert systems that we've both built and are using other people's software that we didn't Correct. have in prior cycles. Correct. Like, if, if you remember, my first Bitcoin was at one of your Linz and Palooza situations where that the change tip, remember change tip? Remember that you could yeah, tweet people? Yeah, uh, we were ambassadors, yeah. Yeah, that was my first Bitcoin ever. That was 2014. I looked up the tweet. It's still there. So that was my first Bitcoin. And then I started really following it in 2016 and trading it. I mean, obviously from the beginning because I was given it. Um, but we now have like alerts, for example. Every time a cryptocurrency, a token of any kind exceeds the $100 million mark in market capitalization, we get alerted right away. Like uh, this week, for example, it was a safe deal. SFD. I don't know anything about safe deal. I actually haven't looked at the chart, but I know that this one now exists and is in my universe. And, you know, as they start getting above that 300 million level, I really start considering, you know, participating, but I'm going low and lower down the cap scale. You're still looking at like a top 200 token. You know, these are not as shit coiny as, as some people would think. These are bigger market caps. So you, you're, are you down with this dog with hat? Are you doing the dog with hat? Have you I'm an owner of what's, that. What's that? Somehow two I billion, that. $2 billion market cap. To your point about no fundamental value, but it's going up. In a way, let me ask you this, JC. In a way, is this like a, such a pure form of technical analysis? Because price is really the only thing that matters. And momentum is really the only thing. Trend is really the only thing that matters. And so it doesn't matter what you trade, right? If something's going up, if something's in a strong trend, you want to be long it, you're going to get long it. You can define risk and you can define where you want to take profits. And you could do this with dog with hat. It looks like it's... Well, here's, here's the thing, Perlman. What happens is that crypto takes it to another level because we're not doing anything that we're not already doing in traditional markets. In fact, this is the exact same thing that we do in the stock market, in the bond market, in the commodities market. It's the same principles. It's still relative strength, momentum, you know, supply and demand. I mean, nothing changes. Here's the difference. The difference is now that everything is on a public blockchain versus in traditional finance where you're trusting auditors, trusting the SEC, trusting that the CEOs are not lying or are not wrong, right? In On the public blockchain, it's- Like I said, it's- there's it, no it's opinion. One against so one. It's, 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 it's data is all there. So we can extract it. So it's the return of the odd lots. Remember the odd lot theory? You know, the odd lotters that were small, right? This goes back to Merrill Lynch in the 1960s. But after the decimalization of the stock market, we lost the odd lot data. It no longer mattered because everything's an odd lot. Now in cryptocurrencies, you can actually see the wallets and what those, those wallets are doing, whether they're smaller wallets or larger wallets, you can yeah. follow any wallet you want. You can follow yeah. the, the, the Paul Tudor Jones or the Stephen Cohen of, of cryptocurrencies because you can Correct. see their wallets. You don't know the person's name or the institution, but you have the track record, which is really all that matters, right? So we just have more data and, and more uh, transparency in crypto markets than we do in traditional finance. He, he nails it as is... As, as, as. It, he he nails it. And here's the other thing, because again, I didn't think we'd be talking about this six months ago. So that's the beautiful thing about it is that we weren't 
talking about it. In fact, we were the economists just a year ago or Business Week or whatever called it the death of crypto. Not that long ago. And Doji's a 24 billion and Dog With Hat's 2 billion. If you had told me that I would be an early owner of Dog With Hat through a fund and that fund would be, it's Nikki Montana, who is Joe, we'll have him on the show. Nikki is Joe's son and runs a crypto fund and was quarterback at a great guy. I think you've met Nikki at one of my events, but he's cute fucking kid. And by cute, I mean good looking, but cute to me because it's fucking Joe Montana's son and he's doing Dog With Hat and he's smarter than me. In the sense that he understands the cultural significance. He didn't grow up in the traditional markets like us. And I think the thing you left out, JC, is compression of time. Meaning if you want to play in this market, Bloomberg won't help you. Discord will help you. Telegram will help you. So so why people are upset about this is not just that it's price that matters in risk management in your network. It's that the tools that you use to play with these are completely different. Yep. I will tell you that I don't use Telegram a, a lot. I don't use Discord at all. And I definitely don't use Deck Screener. And some of the new companies that my funds are investing in, or not my funds, but the funds that I'm an LP in are investing in. And I'm, when I read them, I'm like, what play am I in? What planet am I on that I'm like rooting for things that I never will play with? Because I know that these kids deserve to play with these tools. In a world where fantasy sports and gambling is legal, I am more behind the idea of, of meme coins than I am behind kids doing parlays on sports. I'm not saying either is better than the other, but I'm all for meme coins in a world that betting on games uh, is legal. This is fascinating. This is a cultural response to what we've put these kids through, right? I was listening to this comic story to get side. This isn't an interesting story. I'm at the comedy cellar last week. And if I told you the story on the last show, just stop me. But I'm at the comedy cellar and this, this uh, young black comic who was very stoned, you could tell uh, on stage, but he had this incredible riff. It, it wasn't delivered great, but he was talking about the fuck, of course, we're an anxious generation. I grew up with Gogurt, like I have a sucking yogurt out of a straw. I grew up with Capri Sun uh, things or just jamming sugar in my face 24-7. Uh, you know, I had the iPhone. I had the vape. Of course, I'm anxious. Like, you were making me do these incredibly stupid things, uh, you know. And he was just describing uh, in obvious fashion why this generation is the way they are, and which is why Google is woke as well. It's like we've been just doing weird things and, and experimenting uh on these on this generation forever and meme coins are like a perfect manifestation of what this became I, it's fascinating to me that we're even talking about it but it's more fascinating that i believe in it i believe in like what it stands for i i think you have to jc compress your time if you're going to trade these things you can't go to sleep because the rug pull can happen at 12 30 a.m where it goes from one cent to zero and there's no there's no SEC to call. There's no like timeout. There's no like tweeting. I I got ripped off. You got ripped off. And there you know, the, and the blockchain will probably show you how you got ripped off. But you were sleeping. oh yeah, it's it's documented yeah. there. So you'll yeah, know exactly how you got ripped off. It's documented there that you're an asshole. And right. what's funny about it is that everybody knows the rules. They may not know the rules, but they'll learn the rules pretty fucking fast. Yeah. So I think this is. At least there, at least there are rules, right? Because it's just code, so it's not like people, you know, changing the game. Like I remember being short. Uh, I remember being short small caps in like September of two thousand and eight. Uh, that when they announced that it was uh, you could no longer short bank stocks. Holy shit! Did I get squeezed that morning because they changed the rules? Now, to be fair, it melted afterwards and completely collapsed afterwards. It ended up being a great trade. But that morning was a rough morning. I was 26 years old. They changed the and rules on me. The, the rules got changed on me. I don't know if the rules got changed. The rules mattered. I finally read the rules when XIV, the triple VIX thing, when I bought that. And you were on the phone with me. I remember <laughs> being on the phone, phone with you as you're entering the trade. For those that don't much. remember, it went I'm to like, zero, by the way. <laughs> it went to zero from like I was 90. on the phone with you. <laughs> Anyways, I'm like, dude, I just tried some of this because, you know, the VIX just, uh, the VIX, you know, probably bottomed. And meanwhile, they changed the rules, emptied the fucking accounts, 
And then they blamed it on, well, if you read the fine print, I don't want to read the fine print. Meaning if I don't want to read the fine print, mem coins are for me. You know what the fine print is? The code. And the fine print is you better stay up 24 seven and be in a discord channel and know who the fucking started this thing. So I, I kind of think it's just the beginning of the beginning. Finally, there's something that interests me. Doesn't it? Sorry, I'm not doing mem coin investing or trading, but it truly interests me that people just one quick it. comment to everybody out there around risk and risk management. We're not saying go. We're 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 we're, we're talking. We're, ser- we're having a serious discussion. We're also goofing. We're not saying go put all your money in meme coins. That said, no. the dog with hat logo, according to my logo theory, the dog with hat logo is adorable. I mean, it's a little dog. It's a little, one of those Shinu dogs with the with the hat on. Uh, it's adorable. I mean, how can you? How can you look at that? But, but here's adorable. the other thing. They're cute. Very cute. Say, Eli, say, say Elon wakes up tomorrow and says, "I'm switching out of Doji Coin and Do- Dog with Hat is my new coin." You could have a thousand X that didn't have to pass SEC. Didn't have to be, pass through DraftKings, didn't have to pass through uh, any centralized fucking authority. And you've got a thousand X and with the stable coins and with Phantom Wallet and all these wallets, you can monetize that Elon Musk pimp or what, or, or just goof. That is not a joke anymore. The joke is on the people that are ignoring this. Um, and of course, this came at a time when, like I said, everybody said the death of crypto. Matt Levine was goofing on crypto. Uh, um, FTX is in jail, even though he was probably because he's a criminal, but also because he was right on his bet on Solana and Anthropic. Couldn't happen at a more insane time when everybody was leaning. Oh, you got what you wanted. Uh, a, a 24-7 unregulated market. So all of us high and mighties were like, oh, this is hilarious. This guy was just a... And meanwhile, meme coins is like the Wild West times 100. And I and there's it. more. I fucking no, love it. Because I'd rather, I'd rather my son learn to handicap meme coins than trade parlays on DraftKings. That is the number one thing I would rather all him right, do. All right, so just to be clear, if you had all the market cap of all of these tokens all over the place, tiny, tiny, it might as well be zero, right? Yeah. Mr. Perlman, rounding error, rounding error, rounding error to make to say it nicely. This is a, a multi trillion dollar market, which is great. We are all participants in it, one way or another. We're all investors in it. At least the three of us are. Uh, we're 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 rooting for it now. When you look at real assets, you look at stocks, you look at bonds, you look at commodities. Now, this is the real world that 99.999% of people actually live in, right? This Pearl is, Dog, how, this you is how you do a segue, by the way. This is how <laughs> you do a segue into the technical uh, uh, a portion of our macro uh, section. And now we're segueing and we're going to talk about inflation. JC's theme of the day. Uh, talk to us about this tips for like treasuries. It. Good segue. I'm so glad you're running the show, not me. But this is great. Let's do some real stuff. Well, like let's remember, like when when money money doesn't just disappear; it moves around. And as investors, I think it's important to see where that money money's moving around. It's just flowing. Is really all it is. And there's information in that money flow. And in you know inflation. It's an economic term for, you know, rising commodity prices and rising stuff of things that we need or so, right? Something like that. But the bottom line is the bond market prices this in, right? It's not like we have to wait for a CPI, which, by the way, the CPI is incorrectly calculated. They know that it's incorrectly calculated. They know that we know that they know. And and nobody's doing anything about it. It doesn't even matter. So, like, these numbers are so silly. If you want to know what's what, how inflation is looking, just look at the bond market. And you could see that we're at the highest levels in in the bond market pricing and inflation since the fall, since back around Thanksgiving. What does that mean? Sorry, JC. From so I we're looking at, infl- at tips, right? Tips, which are inflation protected treasuries relative to nominal yielding treasuries. So essentially, how the bond market is pricing in inflation. If you look at 
five-year break-even levels, 10-year break-evens, you're going to get the same data. This is just an easy way for investors to do that, to get the information, just divide uh, TIP relative to IEF, which are tips relative to regular treasury bonds, right? And it's going, it's go been going up all year. Meanwhile, so have commodity prices, right? That's not a coincidence, right? Like these things move together. That's actually perfectly normal. My point is that they are not going down. Like people continue to think, oh, interest rates are going down. That's why the stock market, interest rates are not going down. I don't know if you've looked, uh, but the US 10 year yield closed yesterday at the highest level since November, right? So not only are interest rates not going down, they're going up, right? So, and you're seeing that in commodities. So you can just keep scrolling down. You'll be able to see that uh, gasoline prices are obviously rising with those inflation protected treasuries outperforming nominal yielding treasuries. These are big bases. Uh, when you look at a lot of technology stocks last year, they looked like this. They were breaking out of huge bases. You know, things like uh, NVIDIA looked like this before it broke out. You know, uh, just go stock by stock. You look at Uber and Coinbase. I mean, so many big bases. So uh, and now uh, yeah, everything looked like this. Yeah. Right. So now, but this isn't last year, right? This is very different than last year. So you could just keep going um, because it's just an ongoing theme that the bond market has just been crashing. Interest rates have been going up. That trend isn't over, right? Bonds are I still agree. falling. Right. So let me ask Again, you this. I, I hope I'm wrong. Here's an important question, JC. The if you're just a uh, an indexer like myself, generally, how much exposure? If I own, you know, the uh, Vanguard S and P 500 fund, and I own the Vanguard Total Market Index fund, how much exposure am I getting to uh, CRB? Zero. Okay. Yeah, zero, because those are stock indexes. They're not commodities indexes. The CRB index is a commodities index. So in the S&P 500, you're, not even, you're getting no commodities. But in terms of stocks that have commodity exposure, you're getting 3% right. energy in the S&P 500. In the Dow, you're getting 2%. In the NASDAQ, you're getting zero. Um, in, in, for materials, in the Dow, you're getting zero. NASDAQ, you're getting zero. S&P, you're getting like two. So just, just investors that are in the indexes are getting zero exposure. And then, by the way, now look at look at how the market's been behaving this year. Um, you could see that over the last four years, commodities and stocks have both doubled, right? When you look at the S&P 500 and you look at the commodities index, you can see that right there in the deck. Um, and, but then more recently, over the last month, the best performing sectors are materials and energy. See, here's the four-year chart. Uh, so this is uh, when, so when uh, commodities bottomed. And stocks and commodities have both doubled since those levels. TLT on a total return basis down almost 40%, right? And you wow, can scroll what a down. bear market. What a bear market. I mean, Woo. it's been nasty. And just look at the difference. So the S&P 500's doubled. Energy stocks have tripled. Uh, oil has more than tr more than quadrupled. Um, and then just look at the, at the last Is that from month. the Exxon negative? Is that from the oil negative moment? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting rotation back. So I just want you to know, JC, last Thanks. week- Dude, XLE, which I own again, and gold, which I own, as I mentioned on stock twits, um, uh, I just think they're getting going. Again, I don't know what the fundamentals are other than you would think as soon as rates turn over and actually start dropping, as soon as the Fed start dropping, they will explode. Like, that's what freaks me out. But like what you're saying, JC, is we're not going to get that. We're probably going to get rising, continued rising trend of interest rates, which which is there's no evidence. There's no evidence whatsoever that interest rates are going down. There's other no than like, evidence like, at all. Other than FinTwit. We have, I guess, but I don't know if that, that's I not evidence. That's just opinion. That's just opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's noise. I mean, actual yeah. evidence that interest I rates agree. are going down. Interest rates have been going up and, and there's no evidence that they've stopped going up, number one. So I don't, not only do I not think that these commodities are, are going up because interest rates are going down, I think Interest rates Demand. remain up because these commodities keep going up as well. Look at over the last month, the best perform, think about this, the best performing sectors over the last four weeks, you can go back even six weeks to the beginning of February. The best performing stocks over the last four to six weeks have been the stocks with the least amount of representation in those indexes, right? Energy, materials, utilities, all those indexes, S&P, Dow, NASDAQ, they don't own any of these stocks. The sectors with the most exposure in those levels, right, in those indexes, those are the ones doing the worst. So you look at the new highs list. Half the energy stocks are making new highs. 
There aren't any technology stocks making new highs. 1% of technology is making new highs, right? right? 1%. This could be the beginning of, of that trend. Lewis Johnson and a friend of mine, a wealth manager in Florida, will have him on, but he's been saying this for a few years too. This, this is just beginning. JC, and, you know, we had a program this, when JC was talking about this about four months ago too, which was just beautiful yeah. at that time. To, uh, to yeah, get that. I think this is where math matters and counting stocks and seeing what stuff matters. So nice, nice segue into the real world. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, want to talk about a trade? Yeah, let's talk about a trade. Right. So, uh, Pearl Dog talked about what's working, right? Not the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is the same level it was in early February. The Dow's at the same levels it was in early February. The Russell 2000s, the same levels it was back in early December. Right. So there's been a there, there hasn't been a lot of downside, but there certainly has been a lack of upside uh, in the equities market. So there while there have been a few things working, a lot of things have not been working, especially the things that were working last year. So the things that are working best this year are things, as they say, if you drop it on your foot and it hurts, you buy it. Right. Like those sorts of things, steel, copper, right, iron ore. Look at um, look at gold making new all time highs. Look at the chart of copper right under it basically doing the same thing you know you zoom out on gold and copper they rarely move in opposite direction so i don't think this is necessarily a gold story as it is a metals and commodity story so kind of take that one step further this is a very howard Lindzen chart uh look at reliance uh this this looks like the you know your israeli software stock that you show me or some you know right like these are just these are lin this is lens and i would hope that day. i would have shown you this and i didn't at 60 but i don't know if i'd be showing it to you at two other than to display how stupid i was for not buying it at 60 uh this chart means nothing to me now not that it won't go higher or could go higher and just Zoom like, in. Zoom i would in. hope i would i would hope i would show you this stock at at 60 well, not take, take a look at that but, next wow. chart yeah. there yeah, 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 yeah. That so one. there you go. So you see big base, break, gap and go. I think this thing's got a lot of upside. Um, so I like Reliance Steel long. This is an $18 billion stock. And, you know, from an options perspective, you could get in pretty cheap. Uh, look at the September bull call spread right below. That's what that looks like. So what you're doing is you're buying the 350 calls in Reliance, and then you're selling the 400 calls right so the most you could lose is 11 bucks uh but you could get 39 so that's uh 39 bucks with 11 bucks to risk i mean that's a potential triple easy um i like this i like this trade i got an idea but i'm not i don't know how to i'm just shared it on stock twits yesterday in the afternoon oh do you have another one jc or should i share one go i mean listen i have a thousand go ahead charts. go ahead uh, you're talking about you you're talking Nvidia about co-star howie me. I was going to talk about CoStar, but let me talk about the 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 crypto idea I have. As someone who, it's not inside info in this industry, but someone who makes the calls, and I've made the calls because I have funds that were up 300% last year, and I didn't do anything to make those returns, and I have funds that were up 100% in the first two months through February. Um, that just doesn't happen, okay? Meaning I was making the calls to just both congratulate and get the temperature of the people that have owned those returns, you know, for me the last 18 months. Now they were in big drawdowns, some of them before that, big, big, bigly. Um, some in the 80% drawdown. But you don't expect funds that are in 80% drawdowns to hit all time highs uh 18 months later. You just don't, doesn't, especially at a fund level. It can happen at a stock level, but it just generally doesn't happen at a fund level. We're used to funds imploding when they're down 70% and shutting their doors. And because they're never going to reach our high watermark. So we are in some hopefully new paradigm as someone who's long this sector. But let me just tell you, when Solana ticked back past 200 yesterday and I tweeted that, like, I wouldn't be shocked if we had a massive, you know, sideways pullback uh, rug pull here, is that um, it coincides this run with... Uh, a large FTX Solana position being bid in the 60s. You know, I've gotten some calls to see if I want to own some Solana. I don't I own enough somehow indirectly? But you know, taking that those phone calls and and the fact that there's a huge block being sold under the market, which is FTX's position, if that's true, and I assume it is, then um, 
And seeing Solana at 200, rising from like 140 to 200 while this is being paraded around, uh, meaning if I'm a smart uh, investor, I'm selling my Solana. If I have access to locked up Solana and I can book my long Solana and take some Solana at a discount uh, as an option trade, JC, I'm booking that trade. So I have a feeling. I know. I spoke to Spider Crusher about that. Okay, so I have a feeling when this trade gets publicly announced, that Solana could be a hundred dollars again. Again, I don't. I'm not trading it. I'm long Solana. I wish I could sell some Solana. I don't know. I don't want to short Solana. But in a world where 2,500 meme coins are being made a day because they can and they are, and it'll probably accelerate, um, that's not a market I want to be buying. Um, that's a market with endless supply. Um, which is good for Solana long term because we found a new use case, but I don't think short term good for for crypto. Which is why you may see the seventy thousand in Bitcoin be a breather. Uh, but again, the dynamics are so new to me of this market, and like you said, like between Dex Screener and Discord and Reddit and Stock Twits and Twit and Twit and Crypto Twit and uh, uh, Telegram, I may have no clue what I'm hearing. But like, I still think fundamentals apply from what you know fear and greed and there seems to be excessive amount of silly greed and no one really knows what's really going on underneath the service other than this big block of solana that should hit the market uh, or get gobbled up i mean believe me if you a week ago if you offer me the solana trade i say no and now it's like free money so i got to imagine the 65 dollar or 70 dollar solana uh, locked up stuff is like completely oversubscribed and with Solana trading at two hundred dollars, why do you own Solana at two hundred if there's insiders buying it at seventy? So, anyway, so that's kind of a trade idea, but more. I think the uh, only the only thing that we didn't cover market. that I thought was interesting about what you're seeing in these different tiers of crypto, you sort of have Bitcoin here, and then you have Ethereum, and then you have the Solanas, and then you have these meme coins down here. The only the only point is that. From just a really simplest, sim- simplistic point of view, you can look at this as beta too. So like if Bitcoin gets going, Bitcoin makes a new high, these altcoins or meme coins are going to follow and they're going to follow with much big, bigger percentage moves. And I think you're seeing some of that. It's another way to look at it. Um, yeah, thanks. And then the real estate one, like it's so interesting in real estate with rates going up to see CoStar, which is like an old, like no one likes, if you say CoStar and someone has to rely on CoStar as a product, they hate it. Um, But CSGP is, even with rates where they are in real estate in the toilet, theoretically based on like textbook and what you're hearing about commercial, CoStar crushing and breaking What do they do? What does CoStar do? Just data and and, uh, some, you know, back office for real estate. I, let me just refresh what it does. I think the interesting, the interesting thing about this one is that here's a company that's performing really well and the stock's moving and there's only 1,050 people on stock twits following. Right. Okay, and then you go to Zillow and there's 50,000. So CoStar JC is online marketplace of information analytics. So it's kind of like a Bloomberg of real estate, right? So if, if we pull up the chart, and then the social relevance of it is no one cares. Like literally no one online, no retail investor could give a flying fuck about CoStar. You know what they care about? Open door and fucking Zillow. Like broken, old, no true business model. Open door doesn't have a business model other than losing money on each transaction, theoretically, based on its stock price. And Zillow, um, is kind of wandering in the darkness down from two hundred dollars, and uh, so I think that's that's interesting. That in a, in in this there's breakouts in real estate when all you've heard is taboo about real estate. That 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 trade looks interesting to me. No one's talking about it. There's very high relative strength JC on CoStar CSGP. Yeah, particularly with the, within the group. Within the group, and then you have zero followers. On on stock twits and I, there's no better rel. Yeah, so th- my one trick on stock twits over the years has been to find the highest relative strength stocks with the lowest relative social followings. And you got a wow, forty billion dollar company with a thousand people caring about it versus Zillow, which has gone nowhere for for two years and has fifty thousand followers. So there's there's just that extra impetus 
for their for the price action to continue, assuming that you know the business and the institution stay with it, which they generally do. Um, and so I think that has some fuel. So JC, yeah, JC pulls it up here. That, Digging I, I into, like that. I like looks like it looks like CBOE before CBOE broke out. Remember. Yeah, and I'm still long CBO. Digging okay. into the so data, my, digging into ideas. the data at Stockwitz, the interesting things that we're finding is this relationship between public interest and price. And uh, Riley's doing yeah. the uh, popularity and price. Price and popularity. It's probably the best read of the day, and it took us the least amount of time to dream up the idea. And it's like, the more you dig in, the more info you want. I'm like, no, 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 no. Just read it for three months and like that's the idea where where uh, you you simplify the idea right you can throw as much data you want and by the way relative strength has so much data in creating relative strength there's so much data behind that in creating social relative strength i know the number looks stupid a thousand versus fifty thousand but there's so much there's so much human behavior and data to Build to an area where Zillow has 50,000 stock Twitch followers and CoStar has 1,000. There's so much data in just getting to those raw numbers that seems so dumb that there's plenty of data to back up these thesis that you want to find high, high relative strength stocks in the old IBD model. And what's super interesting is matching those against the ones with the lowest social relative strength. And that's what price and popularity, that's something that Riley and I dreamed up I don't know, about six months ago, and I think it's my favorite. And it's read. still in development. Like this is going to be still in development, but it's you could it's free, and you can just sign up. And we've had you know Riley was on the show forever, and uh, probably bring him back. But um, it just shows you that there's many ways to skin a cat and to invest. You can do meme coins, or you can do really simple old school uh, relative. Howie, do we want to talk about TikTok here? Do we want to have that discussion? I know we have it on our. I'd like to, but Jason, do you have to hop one? We'll talk about two minutes. No, we're good, but I just wanted to add to what you were saying because you're adding an element of sentiment that no one has rings. Well, regardless, just kind of my point is, is that you're bringing in an element of sentiment that brings in a built-in catalyst, right, to potentially drive it higher in the same. Maybe not the same way, but in a similar way that uh, a high short interest ratio is going to provide a potential um, a potential upside. Here's the difference. When you're looking at a, a short squeeze candidate, in many cases, these are terrible companies. In many cases, there's a reason why there's so many shorts. Yeah, that's why I with, don't with, play it. With, I agree. With yeah. what you're doing, it, you're, getting, you're getting that inherent short squeeze but you're getting it in great companies. You're getting in companies that are making new highs. So you're getting the best, still getting that sentiment, that inherent squeeze, but in quality names. And it doesn't mean the stock twitch people are stupid. It just means that all of retail is missed this whole thing. It's not a judgment on, on stupidity or smartness. And I would say the opposite works, even though I, I don't care to prove it out. Or I would say Tesla's struggling not just because of fundamentals, because everybody owns it. If you go to the Tesla stream versus, you know, Toyota stream right now, Tesla's got millions of stock to its followers and Toyota Motor has tens of thousands of followers. All right, it's very similar. It's very similar to uh, sell side analysts, companies that don't have analyst coverage. There's a reason. It's because they, they're under the radar. They don't need uh, Wall Street to do secondaries for them. They don't need to do deals. They're just crushing it. They're under the radar. These are very Eddie Elfenbein type stocks. Some random like, you know, trucking engineering company in Ohio. That's like $9 billion, not covered at all by Wall Street. Just prints money all day. Line go up, increases their dividend every year. This is, these are Eddie Elfenbein stocks. What, what you're looking for you guys are kind of, you know, swimming in a very similar pond, right? We should have yeah, him on the show to talk about that. We'll have Eddie on. Just, yeah, I love, yeah, I just literally wrote that. So, so um, the other thing I was going to say, JC, about the price and popularity, maybe we'll change the name. It's going to show up on Trends with Friends. By the way, we're a couple of weeks away from launching the website Trends with Friends, which will not just have our podcast, but it'll... It's kind of a, a long-term vision of mine to aggregate the best writers in the world, much like Barry Weiss did. Uh, not Barry Weiss, 
an evolution of what we're seeing in the center. So I can't wait to talk about that in a couple of weeks. But the price and popularity, I think, works in the other way, not that I should sell short, meaning find stocks with the weakest relative strength with the most amount of followers, like AMC, like meaning once they break and have weak relative strength, they're generally bad companies or bad businesses. And then find the ones that have hundreds of thousands of followers because they're going to ride that bitch into the ground. We've seen it with Fisker. Like Tesla didn't go to zero. Fisker did. Rivian may go to zero. Uh, I mean, it has more capital, but these things have loyalists and cult uh, followers on the streams, and so f- they they can't they can't they can't they're just bought into the story, and they'll they ride this thing into it's the like ground. the Yahoo message boards back in the day. These are the new Yahoo message boards. This and it. this is why AI is interesting to me. Sorry, just to pull it full circle on AI, because before AI, this data didn't mean that much. In a post AI world, it's much easier to use this data and help people take the data that 16 years of, of messaging, et cetera, have created. And this is why Reddit can finally go public. This is why StockTwits is super interesting right now to me again. Not, not that it always wasn't, but there's like a new area um, of discovery, which is why I'm tripling down on crypto and why we're tripling down on earnings, because we now have signal of where we should be focused uh, based on where the market dynamics are and where the money is flowing and where attention is flowing. So... You know, when I started StockTwits, it was called StockTwits. If I were to, I was talking to Justin Paterno the other day, he goes, you know, you should change the name based on, you know, I'm not going to say the name because I'm trying to buy it. But, um, <laughs> you know, when you started, we're, gonna, we're just going to ask you, you to stop Stock talking right Twitch. about now, Howie. We're going to, we're just going to, okay. we're going to so, yeah. button you up just about right now because you're, you can yeah. just go and you're like, you know, starting to give stuff away. So I, I love you and I love it. Right. But let's talk about TikTok. Let's just get into TikTok. Five minutes on TikTok. What the hell is going on with TikTok? Are we going to make it illegal, or is the is the is the is the Chinese uh, spying on us or brainwashing us? What 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 what's happening? Perlman's, Perlman's on TikTok quite a lot. Perlman's on TikTok for most of his weekends. In the mornings, he likes to get on TikTok. Yeah, first right? thing I do in the morning is before I even get out of bed, I get the Apple uh, the Apple uh, glasses. And I, I, I just, I just put them on too tight so that they hurt my face. And then I just go on TikTok and I don't even do anything on the weekend. I don't get outside. I don't move my body. I just yeah, get on TikTok a Capri and I sun. You there and I watch people dancing and I watch, you know, real estate pitches. And that's really what I do. That's 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 how I like to work. Well, first of all, I think that's genius. Second of all, if you get me a picture of you doing that while sucking on a gogurt and drinking a Capri Sun, I would pay a thousand dollars for that. If someone could create, if someone could generate that picture of Phil with a Apple Vision Pro on his face sucking on a gogurt, I would pay a thousand dollars. So someone out there, like, uh, just Somebody make that happen. That. Uh, but on TikTok, uh, here's what I think. I think the worst thing about this is that uh, we get to see how gross we are as a country because, you know, I think we're acting too late. I mean, I think I wrote this 10 years ago when I went to Beijing um, and freaked me out. I was like, I can't use any of my American products here. Um, And I go, that doesn't seem fair. Uh, And then you come back and you're like, well, we're not China. And you know what? I was like, we aren't China. But that doesn't mean we can't copy some of their ideas, which is like, hey, man. If we can't use Facebook and StockTwits and Twitter and YouTube in China, why are we letting a Chinese company that may or may not, why are we just letting a Chinese company do this? If an American businessman went over to China and started buying up real estate, I think China would have the right to eventually take that real estate away because it's a potential enemy of the state. When a Chinese or a, or a, a Qatar uh, business comes to the United States and buys up all our water and farmland and whatever, we just smile and ignore it. Um, I think, I think that gig is up. Um, the sad thing about the TikTok thing is who bid right away. So fucking obvious. Steve Mnuchin, fucking scum of the earth, uh, the exact type of person you would think that would immediately put up their hand and go, I'll do it. Uh, actually who does put guy? up their hand. Who is he? I don't know. He was just one of the weasels from Goldman Sachs who ran secretary. He was under Trump. He was just, he's a weasel and not, a, not, not dumb, but exactly what you would think. An hour after the government agrees to ban TikTok, who puts up their hand first and who has the money to do it? A greasy, scummy, slick, uh, you know, American. Tell me how you really feel. Well, I'm just saying, like, we're not going to get, we're, we're trading China for the Republican Party owning TikTok. Again, like, we're not just, 
a new overlord. You know, I'm, um, you know, kids shouldn't use TikTok. It's not that great a product. I, I don't know. And it's only the young that are using don't it. Don't put the TikTok on your phone, by the way. If you're watching this, yeah, just don't put it on your phone. And just and I say that to someone who doesn't have issue, Twitter on my phone. Something's going to happen there. Yeah. They're either going to, somebody's going to buy it or they're going to get rid of it in the US. Doesn't really matter. It's all garbage yeah. anyway, one, one way or the other. Kids won't be happy about it. It may affect yeah. some of the companies that do a lot of business in China. Like Apple, if if China responds in some way or if they posture, but bottom line, just don't put it on your phone because it just is another time suck that is meaningless and stupid. All right, that's our five minutes. I do say, you know, start writing, build an email list. You know, if you got to use Substack, it's not a portfolio company or Beehive. Get own your audience. Uh, we all have our email lists. Um, that's that's your true. Um, relationship with your customer, not TikTok or, or uh, these are now marketing vehicles only, you know, Twitter, there are three TikTok. asset classes, three. What are they? What are they? Three asset classes. You have stocks, you have bonds and you have commodities. It's not stocks and, and bonds. It's not stocks and meme coins. It's stocks, it's bonds and commodities. I would add you wanna, one you wanna, attention. You wanna take a sleeve of that and mess around with your meme coins, knock yourself out. I do it myself. Uh, I highly encourage it. It's a lot of fun. You learn a lot, get involved with the meme coins, but there's a, pl a time and a place for everything. There are I think stocks, you're missing there one. are bonds and portfolio. And, and You're and missing one, JC, because you just said it yourself. It's attention. Now, attention may be the smallest sleeve or it could be the biggest sleeve, depending on where you are in your life cycle. And that's why I said email and a newsletter. We're all in the media business, whether you have a YouTube show or you're watching this YouTube yeah, but, show. We're but all power, but not everybody is going to not everybody is going to start a newsletter and start building. their didn't email say that, address, but everybody's but we're all investing trading in somehow. attention. We're everybody, all trading. Everybody's in attention. investing is my point. Yeah, and we're investing in attention. So it's like that I would add the fourth sleeve of attention. TikTok for you, that. though, for you. No, I'm saying it's an asset class. It Meme can coins. be. It can be for the right per, for the right people. For us, obviously, it is. You are missing my point. I am going to argue this, and we're going to we're going to debate this now over the coming weeks. Attention is a fourth sleeve. It started with YouTube, and it continues with TikTok and beyond. For TikTok every email. investor, how you better understand attention because meme coins is a manifestation of attention. I'm just saying, when you say Roman? meme coin, I say it. Here's my view of that. You're ever, we're all going to die one day, so we only have a limited number of minutes to attend to anything. What a so, you know, don't pay attention to TikTok or stupid shit like that. Just go get outside. No, oh, yeah. spring has begun. Days are now longer than nights are. Get the fuck out. Look at it. It's gorgeous outside. Look at that. How is showing the window? Get the fuck outside. Turn your phone off. Turn the ringer off on your phone. All the notifications off. Start on a Thursday afternoon. Get the fuck outside. Play some golf. Go outside and take a hike. Take your dog out. Take a tennis ball with you. Doesn't matter. Stay grassy. Stay gassy for JC's sake. And just get out there. You got the instant cold brew. You're just selling. You never stop. So always be closing. How he's closing. But seriously, get outside. It's spring. For the next six months of your life, you, the, the, the days are going to be longer than the nights. And so that, and the weather's going to be You like warmer. the pictures I'm sending you, Pearl? Love it. I figured you like those videos. Love I'm it. Sending JC's you. getting outside. He's getting in his backyard. He's cutting up pads. He's cutting up hiking trails in his fucking backyard. It's beautiful. I have like probably, I want, I'm going to, I'm when I'm done with it, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mark it, see how long it is. My guess is it's not a full quarter mile. It's probably like a fifth Go of to a mile. Google and Google hiking trail near me. And something's going to pop up within a half hour, 20 minutes. At the most, if it doesn't move because you live in the wrong place, but chances are within 15, 20 minutes of you, there's a place to go where you could take a nice walk in the woods. It's the best thing in the world. Like it's free. You feel better. But don't, by the way, it only works if you don't take your phone. So just I, turn I your phone off. This, just turn the, just turn the ringer off and put it in your bag. No, good. Take a Leave little backpack, put it in your bag. There's a little hack. Put it in your bag. Turn the take ringer off. Take a sack. Take a take sack. Take your sack. All right. Okay. Adios, everybody. All right, boys.